Today I'm here interviewing Tim Marsh, President and CEO of Bell Copper Corporation. Tim, you don't look like the average CEO. Where's your suit and what's with the outfit? Well, Bell Copper Corporation is uh, working on the Cabo Porphyry Copper Project up in northwestern Arizona. Uh, I'm doing my best to help our option E, which is Rio Tinto or Kennecott Exploration Company, get the work done up there. I'm a working CEO. I've been out in the field for the past week, sleeping in the back of my truck, uh, working with the drill, trying to uh, extract some of the steel casing out of the ground that we used this past summer. Uh, we would like to be able to use it again. And so I've been up there you know, working as a geologist, uh, doing the best I can to preserve uh, Bell's investment in the project, maintaining our our interest by uh, you know, slowing the rate that Kennecott can earn into the project. How did you get into this field? I've always had a natural interest in rocks from the, the, the youngest age I can remember. I've had a rock collection. Uh, my mom got sick of all the rocks in my room, uh, but uh, when it came time to go to college, I. I dreamed of and, and uh, uh, got a scholarship to get me to the school I wanted to go to and that was Colorado School of Mines in Golden, Colorado. I got a degree in geological engineering there and uh, uh, got a job shortly thereafter working uh, in gold exploration. Uh, spent a, about four years as a pit geologist uh, shipping gold ore to a crusher in an active heap leach gold mine. and. Uh, as that resource uh, began to dwindle, I, I got on with uh, Stanford University under their uh, graduate program. I studied under Marco Ainaudi at Stanford University. Uh, the topic of my uh, doctoral dissertation was uh, age dating the uh, porphyry copper mineralization and, and related uh, gold mineralization down in uh, Chile in an old district, old porphyry district, the Potrios district, Chile and in the process uh, became quite familiar with porphyry copper deposits. And, uh, my first job out of Stanford was uh, exploring for porphyry copper deposits in sunny Arizona. That was 22 years ago and I've done a lot of exploration for porphyry coppers in Arizona since that time. Uh, I've also explored for porphyry coppers in northern Chile, uh, in the Philippines, a bit in China and in uh, the Canadian Cordillera. So what is Kaba and where is it located? Kaba is the name of our porphyry copper exploration project located in northwestern Arizona. We're about 15 miles east of the town of Kingman and about two hours south of Las Vegas and about three hours northwest of Phoenix we're located on a trend of producing porphyry copper deposits. Uh, Baghdad, a, a billion ton copper resource and, and actively producing mine about 70 miles to the southeast. And then uh, the Mineral Park porphyry copper mine to the northwest of us, northwest of Kingman. So we're on a productive porphyry copper trend. We've clearly identified a porphyry copper system in our drill cores and uh, now we're hoping to complete the process of discovering Arizona's newest porphyry copper deposit. And what exactly are you looking to find at Caba? At Caba we, we have an advantage that few explorers have and that's the, the, the window into the bottom of the copper deposit. Uh, at Caba a fault with with many kilometers of slip uh, has exposed the bottom of a giant porphyry copper system. We know it's giant, we can walk around on it, we can see the intense network of veins and the, the uh, envelopes of intense alteration over many, many square kilometers, 15 or so square kilometers of the bedrock. Uh, we know we're deep in the system in that exposure, but our property is located eight kilometers to the east of that where the the upper part of the fault has shifted the top of the system. 
we found in our drill cores uh, the top of a porphyry system. We know where it came from. We know the uh, dimensions of the bottom. So we have no reason to doubt that the top of that system will be just as large. Uh, that, that size places it within the realm of the, the largest copper deposits in the world. We haven't found the, the high-grade copper mineralization yet. That's what we're continuing to explore for. But we know the size of the prize is among the largest copper deposits in the world if the copper endowment is there. So what kind of work has been done so far this year, 2017? Uh, we started off this year by wrapping up some geophysical surveys. That's uh, Kennecott Exploration Company did those surveys. Uh, they collected uh, late last year, 2016, a, a drone helicopter aeromagnetic survey uh, and then followed that up with a uh, Titan 24 induced polarization and uh, magnetotelluric survey, which uh, painted a pretty nice picture of the target at Kaaba. Uh, that target was uh, significantly outside of any area that Bell has drilled in the past. Uh, it says that the target that we've been searching for is there. It's uh, every bit as big as what, uh, what we've been thinking of. Uh, but it's in a position beyond where we've ever drilled in the past. So uh, uh, we, we got, following the geophysics, we got through the permitting process and, and got out on the ground and drilled five sites. Those, those sites were targeted very specifically. Uh, it was a bit interactive between uh, Kennecott and Bell, but mainly it was to test induced polarization targets uh, we found through the drilling that those targets were areas of significant pyrite accumulation. And pyrite tends to form a, a shell external to where most of the copper is in a porphyry copper system. And so we, we really confirmed what the source of the IP anomalies was this summer. Uh, large areas of strong pyrite mineralization that uh, is quite plausibly related to uh, an inner Un yet untested core of copper mineralization. So when will there be a discovery? That's a, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I think that, that conjures uh, up an image of Yogi Berra uh, who said, uh, it's really tough to make predictions, especially about the future. It's hard to say if and when a, a discovery will be made at Kaaba, but we have seen uh, a continually uh, growing body of evidence in the form of drill core in the box of the features of a, a giant porphyry copper deposit. The spacing between some of our holes is in excess of two kilometers. Things continue to great depth. We've drilled to uh, nearly a kilometer and a half in some of the holes and seen that the system is continuous over those kinds of depths. So we're really drilling the, the flanks of a, a giant porphyry copper system. What remains to be seen is where the high grade copper mineralization exists, if it's there. We've seen very good at mineralogical indications that we should expect some high grade. Uh, the minerals bornite and chalcosite in particular are uh, uh, minerals that would contribute to a higher than average copper grade. They're present in some of our drill cores in small amounts so far, but we have reason to be optimistic that the processes that made them in the cores that we have will also be operating to a stronger degree in the center of the system, which we've yet to drill. So I can say uh, we know where the, the margins, at least the, the south and west margins of this system are and uh, we ought to be uh, quite successful with our next campaign of drilling, getting our drill holes within that, uh, what we now understand to be the pyrite halo of uh, a large porphyry copper system. So I think you have every reason to expect uh, some exciting drilling news uh, out of uh, uh, the, the coming drilling campaign, uh, which we would sure like to get started in the first quarter of 2018. So what is Rio Tinto and why should we care? Rio Tinto 
is uh, the second largest mining company in the world. They've got operations all around the world. They're, they're active mines uh, every day, every night. They are extracting minerals from the ground. Uh, many of their assets have been in operation for many decades and those assets are, are day by day expiring. Uh, they're a, a giant corporation that requires a giant supply of new projects if they're going to stay in existence. Bell has uh, uh, sort of teamed up with Kennecott Exploration Company, the exploration arm of Rio Tinto, uh, at our Cava Porphyry Copper Exploration Project in Arizona. We've, we've given to Kennecott Exploration Company a, option to earn 55% uh, of that project by expending $3 million. Over the course of the past about one and a half years, they've made that expenditure. We're now at a juncture where, where they've got a, a second option to spend another $10 million if they deem the project uh, uh, promising and uh, thereby earning another 19% into the project. So uh, it, it, Rio Tinto is a, a large company that uh, uh, is now in bed with Bell on the Cava Exploration Project, our, our one and only asset. Can you talk about your previous experience with Rio Tinto? Yeah, back in 2001, I was uh, working as a driller for ProSonic Corporation. Uh, trying to make ends meet at a, a very slow time in the copper mining business uh, when I got the opportunity to show around uh, the president of Kennecott Exploration Company, uh, show him another copper project I had worked on previously to see if Kennecott might be interested in that. Uh, instead, uh, he suggested I might come to work on uh, their latest and greatest exploration project, uh, which eventually came to be known as uh, Resolution. At the time, it was uh, a discovery of Magma Copper Cor Corporation owned by BHP, and Kennecott had taken uh, an option to earn 54% of that project by drilling some very deep holes and testing the idea of a, of a giant porphyry copper deposit. Uh, that project, for me, turned out to be a uh, a more long-term assignment. I became chief geologist of the project. I uh, certainly wasn't the only geologist working on it. I wasn't the discoverer of, of resolution by any means. That was a classmate of mine, Scott Mansky, uh, who played a key role in discovering it. There are other important geological contributors, Don Hammer in particular, and uh, Eric Seedorf at Magma Copper Company, all, all worked to make that discovery. But Kennecott's uh, contribution was was quite significant. They spent uh, big money and drilled very deep holes to demonstrate that a, a deposit uh, that now stands as the largest copper resource in uh, North America uh, was in the subsurface there. So I became chief geologist of that project and over the course of the following uh, couple of years we drilled uh, 20 deep holes into that system. Uh, the system is still not drilled out maybe as much as half of it's gone, but uh, I, got, I got a real close look at uh, the insides, the top, the bottom of uh, one of the world's great accumulations of copper. Uh, that, that exposure and, and that assignment convinced me of a couple of things. One thing was uh, I didn't want to spend my career uh, drilling a, a gigantic copper deposit on 75 meter centers. I wanted to be out in the field uh, looking for the next uh, giant copper deposit. And uh, I learned in the process that Rio Tinto was uh, uh, probably the very best mining company in the world in terms of how they, how they work, how they uh, try to interact with the community in, in the most positive way. And uh, from, from the time I joined Bell, I've, I've strove to, uh, to get Rio Tinto's attention and uh, bring them into uh, what we're doing as a way to build value in Bell Copper. So what can we look forward to in 2018? Well, our, our uh, 
Option E, Kennecott Exploration Company, has uh, achieved a, a milestone in, in our agreement with them, and that is that they've, they've roughly spent $3 million in their first uh, geophysical and, and drilling campaign at Kaaba. Uh, that means they will have, have earned a 55% interest in the project, and uh, they're at a decision point where they need to decide if they're going to uh, continue to do work on the project, uh, uh, the next step in that would be for them to uh, make an expenditure of uh, at least $10 million U.S. and uh, or earn through that earn an additional 19% in the project. So we expect uh, some assay results from the past summer's drilling. Uh, we expect announcement of uh, whether or not they'll continue with the project and make this second investment. And, uh, and really what we expect based on what we saw in the drill holes this summer is to be back out on the ground uh, drilling again, I would expect, in the first quarter of 2018.